So I have looked at the time on my camera and realized that this is better done in two parts. So um, here is basically the second part of my top 25 list. Um, we have already covered 25 down to 11. And now we are down to the final top 10. So let's do that without any further interruption. So my number 10 is Possible Musics by John Hassel and Brian Eno. Um, this was a seminal album, I think that uh, completely uh, defined uh, whole uh, aspects of uh, ambient music uh, that was still developing at that time. And I think it's a major influence on projects like uh, Oyukai Conjugate. And um, yeah, it's a fascinating album. It's a complete game changer. It was for me when I heard it for the first time. I thought, wow, this is truly wonderful. This is a beautiful re-release that came out here in Germany on Glitterbeat. Sort of a gatefold uh, here. Yeah, so this is... Uh, I'm a big ambient fan, have been for certainly over 25 years now. And uh, this is uh, one of the best ambient albums you can imagine. So, what is next? Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Now we're coming to my number nine, which is uh, the album Under Wraps by Jethro Tull, my favorite Jethro Tull album. Yeah, to many people's chagrin, I would say. <laughs> but uh, I love this album. I think this is a great uh, LP that uh, has a lot to offer. And um, it's mostly uh, the, the bitter old-fashioned Tull fans that kind of can't overcome their inhibitions when it comes to this record. But it was never a problem for me because I was a big fan of the 80s uh, sort of a drum computer driven sound anyway because it's part of my generation, so what? So when this band came out of the 70s and made this album I had no problems with that. I thought, oh that's fascinating. So that's what they have to contribute to the world of synthesizers and electronics. And uh, what I like about it is that it turned out to be completely different than the rest of the whole electronica movement. I mean, this came out in the same month. It came, it came even before a seminal album like uh, The Age of Consent by Bronsky Beat. And um, their electronic vision sounds completely different than Depeche Mode and Yazoo and Bronsky Beat did sound. And, uh, uh, and all these bands. So that's what I like about it. It's highly fascinating. Um, I see it always, I listen to it mostly together with uh, Ian Anderson's first solo album. It came out in basically the same period of time, same people, same composing. So it's more like a double album for me actually. But I already said that on uh, in one of my videos and um, I should not repeat myself so much. So this was my number eight no, nine. Um, now, number eight. This one you probably never heard of before, but uh, let me teach you. Um, Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. Um, so that's, uh, of course, another um, probably uh, um, expected choice. Um, again, this took a little bit of thinking do I like it more than Dark Side of the Moon? And do I like it more than Metal? I mean, I think for many, many years Metal was my favorite Pink Floyd album. It, to a certain degree it still is. Um, but if you have to make a choice, I um, guess uh, I like the, the soundscape-y aspects of this album. I like sort of... Uh, I certainly like sort of the industrial electronic experimentation on it. That's very fascinating. Uh, and I like the the final 12 minutes, uh, really exciting, uh, with all these recapitulations and all these uh, unexpected new themes coming out. Um, it's a wonderful album, but uh, uh, this has been said a lot, so uh, that's nothing new about that. Number seven. Well, now it's getting exciting, right? So um, this is Taihen by the Japanese artist Toshinori Kondo. Toshinori Kondo is a trumpet player. 
uh, spent a lot of time in New York, uh, I've been part of the new wave scene, uh, part of the sort of a modern jazz scene. Uh, this is uh, one of his many um, solo albums that he made. It's one of the earlier ones. I think it came out in 1984, yeah. And uh, it's my favorite. I really love it. This is a great record with a wonderful atmosphere. Um, it's very jazzy, very no, no wavy, if there is such a word. Um, it's really cool to listen. I mean, there are some uh, very fierce tracks on it, but most of them are rather calm. And there's always a bit of humor on Toshinori Kondo's albums. Um, so I love it. This is really a wonderful album. And uh, it's one of those things uh, I bought it just uh, on, a, on, a, on a hunch, being in a record store somewhere in the... This was like late 80s and uh, I... I mean, it looked a little bit too expensive for me, but I kind of felt like... Yeah, maybe, maybe I will uh, regret it if I don't buy it, so I did it. And um, yeah, what a wonderful purchase. I love this album. Taihen, it's the name of the album. Taihen by Toshinori Kondo. What is next? Oh yes, that's uh, the last CD in our list. Another album that does not exist on vinyl. And this is uh, Equator by Oyukai Conjugate. Now I'm a huge Oyukai Conjugate fan. I've been uh, trying to get my fingers on everything they ever produced and released. Um, this is uh, by far my favorite ambient project. Um, it's a fascinating group of artists from England that, um, yeah, that uh, they kind of came to rise uh, um, with the CD culture, so uh, there is not that much by them uh, on vinyl. Although I have it uh, from a good source that this album will probably come out as a double album on vinyl in America within the next. 10 to 12 months maybe. So stay tuned because I think when this comes out on vinyl this will be uh, quite appreciated in the vinyl community. That's what I expect from it. <laughs> it's a great ambient album but it's sort of this kind of organic ambient that's combined with tribal... Well, I call it an ambient album just because it simplifies things. It's it's more... Uh, there was a time when this has been called like tribal ambient or organic ambient. So um, it's very multi-layered. It's not the kind of ambient music that is based on creating emptiness. It's very much... Um, multi-layered uh, with all kind of sort of tribal and uh, ethnographical ideas uh, that are um, woven into the whole sound and um, again uh, it took me some thinking to figure out which one of their beautiful albums I regard most and in the end I picked this one it's really a great record Equator Oyukai Conjugate a must-have so number five is World Power by Joe Jackson. Um, now this album is of course a big detour for Joe Jackson, especially uh, compared with this catalog of the 80s. Um, it's a very different kind of album. It's an orchestral album uh, that is uh, deeply rooted in sort of expressionistic uh, orchestral music and uh, just some amazing ideas and it's very original, very atmospheric. Uh, it's something you can listen to for years and years and uh, it doesn't get old, so to speak. Um, so I really love that. So it contains wonderful compositions. Um, yeah, I can recommend this to everyone who's looking for something that is a bit different. So, uh, we're coming to number four. And my number four is the album I, Robot by the Alan Parsons Project. This was uh, Alan Parsons Project's second album. Uh, a strike of genius in my book. This is a great record that is perfect and fantastic from beginning to the end. Um, it's, uh, I mean, there are some people who have issues with it. Mostly because they think uh, that the rhythm section is kind of too much in the spirit of sort of uh, the disco era, which is exactly the time when this album came out. That's for me. That's something I like about it. I like the groove. Uh, I like the the vibe of the album. On the other hand, the B side um, is quite experimental, even um, stretching out to 
sort of areas like ambient and um, yeah so many great things have been said about this record and uh, so I don't need to add uh, any more it's not a surprise that this kind of made my number four in the list um, it's certainly one of my all-time favorite albums so now uh, we are down to the top three it's not amazing so um, this is my top three number three is uh, left-handed dream by Ryuichi Sakamoto this was a very early 80s recording uh, co-produced with Robin Scott and uh, with uh, huge contributions uh, by Adrian Bellew not only on guitar but also on drums and percussions um, I mean it's, uh, it's such a wonderful album and um, it's a bit of an odd choice because uh, from all my Sakamoto albums that I have especially those from the 80s I mean there are many more which are much more sophisticated uh, which uh, have more sort of accomplished and finalized uh, song formats in it and, uh, and are certainly uh, produced uh, so with much more uh, maybe effort or much more uh, um, production value or whatever but there's something so intriguing about this album I mean this album really feels like a journey like a discovery so there is something about it I find very appealing um, so um, it's uh, it's just a bunch of guys throwing new ideas on the table, you know, and just trying out things. And, uh, um, and that makes it very appealing. It's a fascinating album. It's like, a, it's one of those few albums where I just think like, yeah, I would have loved to be there in the studio, somewhere in the corner, just to watch this stuff happen. So, um, um, to a certain degree, it's probably my favorite Sakamoto album. Uh, because it has this uh, very strange, fascinating mood. Uh, um, and uh, so that's why it's my number three. Even though it's a bit of an uh, uh, odd stretch because I love the other Sakamoto albums as well. So it's not that easy. Um, yeah, number two is uh, Ambient 4 On Land by Mr. Brian Eno. Uh, wonderful... Uh, defining uh, you know album uh, a cornerstone of, uh, of the whole ambient movement maybe the most important album I uh, love everything about it um, that's just the kind of sound that is very flawless and very fascinating and uh, yeah it doesn't get old through the decades which is quite great isn't it and finally the number one the winner but that is also old news because I said it at least twice in other videos as well so <laughs> um, but interestingly this is my favorite album for many years now actually since uh, 1989 that's the year when I discovered it in a record store in Munich I'm talking about uh, within the realm of a dying sun by Dead Can Dance I'm a huge Dead Can Dance fan and I'm a very huge uh, Brandon Perry fan um, and I think this album uh, has a has a beautiful atmosphere and uh, it's quite flawless and uh, if there is one thing about it that uh, I would criticize then it could have been twice as long <laughs> in my book so I think this has been produced 1987 if I'm not wrong maybe 88 but I think 87 um, and um, yeah for whatever reasons uh, I still feel like this is their most accomplished album there's something very very round about it, uh, very flawless. Um, at the same time, it has a certain sort of undergroundy vibe. It is not an overproduced. It is not an overproduced world music album where you suddenly have all these possibilities, so you use them and you kind of get a this brew of uh, great sounding stuff that, to a certain degree, isn't as impressive as something like that, which. Um, if you listen closely you kind of feel like yeah this is sort of something uh, that has been recorded uh, in the living room but um, in a very fascinating way I mean, the musical ideas are, are, are mind-blowing this is uh, my number one simply said so um, yeah let's uh, 
that's my uh, story about my top 25 albums. Now you know everything about me. So, um, yeah, I would actually like to know um, if, uh, if uh, how, how you could or could not identify with this list, uh, to which extent you thought that at certain point I'm completely crazy to uh, push an album like that or this. Um, but I could, I can imagine, because it's a rather, it's a rather eclectic mixture if you look at it, right? So I could imagine there are a couple of albums here that uh, you probably like as well, and that would probably make your top 25 as well. And maybe there was something here that you never heard of before. So uh, I can certainly recommend every minute uh, of these records. So um, yeah, that's it. Um, and um, we see each other again in another video, I think. And uh, thanks for watching and um, see you next time. Keep it spinning and goodbye.